this go. Questions from homework, anything? I know a few people have tried two, three out. Trisha, what's up? Uh, yeah, in two, three, the homework question one, it wants you to find the things that are wrong with the problem. Is there more than one? Oh, I see. Um, I don't know. There's something wrong with it. Okay. So there's one thing wrong with it. Okay, I was just making sure. Okay. Thank you. And, and those kind of problems can be really shitty because <laughs> That, that kind of problem happens a lot in math and it really sucks because it'll it'll say here's a proof and then they'll and then at the end of it it says what was wrong with this proof and i'm like i liked all of it oh shit so this one's a little bit hidden but what would the units come out to be on this first part everybody what were the centimeters. units centimeter what so square. this would be square times another one Cubed. So why does that part seem okay from the standpoint of units? Because it's volume. So what's wrong with this part? It's not cubed. It's not cubed, yeah. And in fact, we know the formula for a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So somebody just put a 2 there instead of a 3. So there's a gimme for everybody. But that kind of problem can be a little annoying. But the big thing there is just what are the units? Do the units work? That's one of the most fundamental things you can check when you're doing a problem like this. Uh, oh yeah, I helped you guys out with this. This was kind of evil that they're like, go find your own formula, leave us alone. So I gave you that formula for a sphere, right? Okay, anything else from uh, two, three or two, 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 one, any other homework? problems I feel so bad that I can't now I'm not asking I'm not saying I'm not complaining that you don't have your camera on but I just I miss being in the classroom where I can see people and I can see how you're actually doing thank you Caitlin but I'm not I'm not pleading for people to turn the camera on. it's okay but I just I have no idea how you're actually doing <laughs> and I, I hope you're doing okay um, no questions from homework. You guys are doing fantastic with homework. No problems. All right, so let's talk about the quiz that's coming. All right, I think you're going to appreciate this. I, I have decided to uh, make this next quiz. It's still going to happen Thursday, but it's going to be 212223. It's not going to include section two four. You guys understand? So the the next quiz is scheduled for this Thursday, and it was supposed to go up through. Let me show you. It's supposed to go up through two four right here. I have decided that I didn't really give you enough time to do two four homework. Officially, it was supposed to be due. Uh, tomorrow, I think. Um, and let me show you, I've changed the due dates. If you look at 2-4, it's now due the 14th. And 2-3, I changed it to uh, tomorrow. Section 2-3. Woohoo! Yay! And the crowd went, yeah. All right. So, so just trying to space things out a little bit more. Um, and I like having the quiz on Thursday because then I can grade them over the weekend. It gives me a little more time. So it's not all about you, but it is mostly about you. Um, all right, let me think what else I want to show you. There was something else. Maybe that was it. Okay. Pop. Um, so I want to talk about a couple of problems in 2-3. Um, let me bring this back up. Just to kind of help you before, I know some of you guys are in this section now, but some of you guys have not made it here yet. So it's 
pretty straightforward. It's basically exactly like the problem we did together when I put the, the ball in the, in the cylinder, we figured out how much empty space was there. That's basically what they do here, but they go one step further. They do this. What percentage of the volume of the can is filled by the tennis balls? So let me talk about that specifically just for a minute. Oh shit, I'm gonna plug you in, come here. Awaken, all right. Oh man, all right, here we go. So at this point, number four, that's the one that says what percentage of the can is filled by the tennis ball. So at this point, you would have figured out the volume of the can and the volume of all three balls, right? You would have figured those out. So let me just make up some numbers and you do the same thing we're about to do with your numbers that I do with these made up numbers. So let's say the volume of the can, let's say it's uh, uh, 50 uh, cubic inches, right? That is not what it is. And let's say the volume of all three balls, let's say that's uh, 10 cubic inches, right? Completely not what it really is, but let's just say that that's what I got. What percentage of the volume of the can is filled by the tennis balls? How do I figure that out? Oh, I got a chat. A wild chat has appeared. Interesting. I've got an answer. Can somebody else tell me how to do it? How do I calculate a percentage anytime? How do I always calculate a percentage? Yeah, I do. All right, one person is playing with me. That's fine. I do the part divided by the whole. So the part is the tennis balls. They're taking up a percentage of the whole can. So it's part divided by whole. So it'll be 10 cubic inches divided by 50 cubic inches. What happens to these when I divide? What is cubic inches divided by cubic inches? Just regular inches? No, no, no. What's is seven divided by seven? One. Okay, so anything divided by itself is, is one, they cancel. Yeah. Okay, so that's interesting. That's something to keep note of. They might ask you that, I don't know, in number five. Um, and then 10 over 50 would be one fifth, which you can do divided, you make a point two, you eventually get to 20%, like Trisha said. So 20% of the can would be filled by tennis balls, which means what percentage of the can is empty? 80. 80%, it's crazy. If 20% filled with stuff, 80% has nothing in it. All right. So obviously if you're packaging uh, items to, to ship out, isn't there more cost if your package that you're putting stuff in is, is larger, right? So don't you want to try to figure out the most efficient way to pack your stuff? You want the percentage you want this percentage to be higher and higher because then you're wasting less material. Does that make sense? So for some reason, tennis ball containers are cylindrical. That might have something to do, and, and racquetball containers are cylindrical. Maybe that's the best shape. And it is, it's the best shape. Okay, anyway, all right. Why is soup in a cylinder? I don't know. <laughs> Then, you got it. same thing actually, to be honest, that's how you get the largest volume. Uh, anyway, all right, enough of that, enough of that. So I just want to help you out because number four comes out of nowhere. It's a percentage question, but percentages seem to keep coming up because they are very important ideas to understand. Okay. All right. So anything else before we move on? All right, just to make sure everybody understands, the, the quiz is still happening Thursday, but it's going to be 212223. It's not going to include 24. All right, but since no one has questions, we are going to go ahead and get into 24.
Here, let me help you out with one more thing then. I'll, I'll ask all the questions today. Um, number seven is about golf ball container. And the golf ball container is a box. It's not a cylinder. So how would I figure out the volume of this box? What would I need to know? What the base and the height are? Yeah, I need to know the length and the width and the height. And they tell you, now you gotta be careful how they tell us this. Tell me the radius of every golf ball is 2.2 centimeters. You're not right over that. They tell me the length and width are twice the radius and the height is six times the radius. Okay. And I don't know, did they tell you there's three? Yeah, there's three of them. Okay, what's up? So to find the base, it would be 2.2 .2 times 2.2, .2, right? No. So can somebody tell me what the length is of the base? Oh, 4.4. .4. There we go. The length and the width are both twice the radius. So the length and the width are both 4.4. .4. I like it, okay. And then the height is six times. Now, let me ask you this. Guys, stay with me. Why does it make sense that this is twice the radius? So here's the radius of a ball, right? What would twice the radius do? It would be the diameter. It's, yeah, and don't you want so that you're not wasting material. Don't you want the golf ball to hit both sides of the container? Do you guys, are you, are, is anybody with me? Don't yes. you want the golf ball? You don't want a big old yes. box, right? You like sort of when you buy from Amazon. And by the way, this week is uh, it's kind of like boycott Amazon week. I don't know if you guys know that, but, uh, but you, you, this, because they're jackasses. Uh, sorry. That's a political statement, possibly. I don't know. Uh, Amazon workers are trying to unionize, and Amazon is putting a lot of uh, propaganda about unionization up, trying to make that not happen. Uh -huh. Let's not go there, because that's political. You could have a different opinion, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Now, has anyone ever got something from Amazon, and it's this giant box, and then there's this, it's just this little thing <laughs> inside the yeah. box? That makes so little sense, but somehow that must work within their business model. Like they don't want to spend a lot of money getting a lot of different size boxes. So they get only certain size boxes. And I guess that comes, that they come out ahead that way. I don't know, but you're a little company, you're going to get a box made. You don't want to waste material. So you want the golf ball to be snug in there. So why does it make sense that this is six times the radius? If each ball is twice the radius and I got three of them. So of course, what total should this be in the, the height should be twice the radius and then another twice the radius and another twice the radius. That's why it makes sense that it's six times the radius. That would exactly fit three golf balls. Now, do you have to know any of this to be able to do this problem? No, you don't. I just wanna point out why the way they've set things up makes sense. Just try not to waste material so it costs less for the company. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Interesting. So, what we're about to get into now, look what we're about to get into. Look at this bad boy here. Okay, so this pretty much tells you what we're about to get into. Uh, a lot of this should look familiar, correct? Like 12 inches is one foot. Do you guys see anything on here that looks weird? Anything, anything look weird? Temperature stuff to me looks weird. Temperature stuff looks weird. Look at that weird shit. Yeah, Especially I agree. this part here, what's this, what's K? Anybody know what K is? Kelvin. Kelvin, Lord Kelvin. 
Anybody ever heard of absolute zero? Yep. Yep. Yeah. And of course, absolute zero means zero degrees Kelvin. That's the absence of energy. That means we're all dead. So I was doing research at Old Dominion University on the East Coast, cooling atoms down to millions of a degree above absolute zero so that they would sort of spread together. They would kind of overlap each other. It was so neat. Uh, anyway, anyway, so absolute zero is freaky. That's Kelvin scale. Of course, zero degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, you can get colder than that. All right, enough of that, enough of that. So some of the temperature stuff looks weird. Uh, nothing else looks too, too weird, right? This is all normal. What about this stuff here? What is this all about? So obviously it's about the metric system. Have you guys seen all of these symbols? I mean, everybody's seen this symbol here. Yes? What about these? Hmm, and damn. No, this isn't new. Say again, sorry? This is a new, I don't know what that's. Okay, okay, gotcha. Okay, so we're gonna be learning about these weird ass things, right? Uh, but everything up here should look pretty familiar. Not everybody might know this, but I think most of you guys know a ton is 2,000 pounds, right? Well, everybody knows about this. Okay, okay. And I always forget about cups and pints and quarts and whatever. I always, I don't know, especially fluid ounces. Screw that. I can't remember. Um, okay. So what we're about to get into are conversions. So let's do a couple of, uh, let's actually do some of these. Um, let me, let me, let's put a problem up here. Let me see. Can somebody tell me, let's start off easy. Can somebody tell me uh, uh, one pint is how many cups? Four. No. One pint is how many cups? Is it two? Ooh. Yeah, I mean, it's, oh, gee, I was thinking of quartz. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's you early. Like... It's early. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I completely agree. Um, and you didn't realize I would give you one that was so easy, you just had to read it off. I understand. You thought there must be some work. Oh um, my god, it's right in front of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What the hell? I'm not laughing at you. I'm just laughing near you. Now, what? Let's let's try a little bit more interesting. Um, can somebody tell me uh, two quarts is how many cups? Let's see if we can develop a way to do this. Eight. Oh, interesting. Somebody's got the answer really quick. So when I ask you two quarts is how many cups? All right. So why is that a little more difficult? Because for two reasons, I got two of something and quartz doesn't relate directly with cups, correct? Can somebody see who the middleman is? Does that make sense? Who's the middleman in quartz to cups? The pint, right? Yeah, so I gotta go from quartz to pints to cups. Okay, I like it. Do you guys all, does everybody see that? That's kind of the path I have to take. So two quartz is how many pints? Oh shit. I'm writing over it, sorry. Four. Right. Yes, so does everybody see that? Two quarts would be four pints. And then four pints would be how many cups? Every pint is two cups, so four pints would be how many cups? Eight cups. All right. So now this could get very gross very quickly. So we're going to develop a really nice way to do this. So you always know, am I dividing or am I multiplying? So we're about to, we're going to develop a method that will always get us to do the right thing. So what do I mean by that? So let me ask you this. Is, is any questions about how we just did 
this problem here? No, Professor, I have a question. I used in my kitchen the court, the, cup, the court, but point, this is new, I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, some of this could be new to some of us, but the nice thing is it's all defined right here. Okay. Yeah. Can you give us an example when we can see bind? Usually yeah. In the, in the uh, milk, make it C liter, C quart. Sure, C sure. Has bar. anyone ever bought a pint of anything? No? Ice, ice cream. cream. Yes, ice cream. Right? They're, they're about this big. Uh -huh. right. So uh, let me ask you this. Let's see if, let's see. All right, get ready, guys. Get ready, guys. There we go. I was waiting to see if anybody drank anything. All right, <laughs> sorry. So yeah, you get a pint from a bar or something. Let me get a pint. Um, I'm not saying you have to drink to understand uh, these units. All right, so don't suddenly start drinking and say, my math teacher said I had to drink. Don't do that. That's not true. Uh, Dean, I never said that. So, so don't fire me. Okay, now let me ask you this question. Let me come over here. Um, let's see, eight cups would equal how many pints? Four. Say again, sorry. Is it four? It is four. Does everybody see how he got that? How many yes. cups makes one pint? Two. Two cups make one pint. So eight cups is four times as many. So eight cups will make four pints. All right, now, so the basic idea, I really want you guys to get this. Just stay with me, stay with me. We are going to formalize this. We're going to make a nice process to help us when we're not sure. But does everybody see how conversions are always either multiplying or dividing? Right? What's eight divided by two? Four, there we go. So what the, the operation I needed on this problem was division. The operation I needed on this problem over here was multiplication. So it's all about when do I multiply, when do I divide? Let's try another one. Can somebody tell me 36 inches is how many feet? Three. Three. Three feet, 11. If 12 inches make one foot, then 36 inches makes three feet, 11. So some of us will be better with this than others kind of going into this. Some people are able to see when you divide or multiply better than other people, but I promise you, we will all want to use this method I'm going to show you at some point to help us out, especially when things get like a really long path to take. Okay, let me show. So let me let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, let me see. I'm going to clear all this away. I'm going to kind of start fresh. Go away. Okay. So watch this. Let's see. What can I do here that's more interesting? Oh yeah, let's go down here. These these get freaky. Oh shit. Sorry. Dang it. Rah. Okay. Here we go. So let's say I wanted to, uh, I'm curious, I want to know, uh, let's see, what do I want to know? Yeah, I want to know uh, eight centimeters equals how many feet? All right. Okay. So the first step in my problem is and the, the reason a lot of people get this wrong is they don't do this step. This step is very important. What path am I going to take? I can go from centimeters to what? Inches. Yes. So right there, I can go from centimeters to inches. And then, of course, I can go from inches to feet. feet. Right? Because, of course, we already know 12 inches and a foot. Now, watch this. Not everybody's gonna need this all the time, but this is a beautiful way to do this. Okay, now watch, this is so nice. It's almost too nice to believe. I'm gonna write down eight centimeters. All right, 
Do I want centimeters in my answer? No, right? That's kind of a silly question. I want my answer to have feet. I don't want my answer to have any freaking centimeters. I want the centimeters gone. So would I put the centimeters down here or up here to make them cancel? Down here or up here? Where would I put centimeters so they would cancel? Down there. Um, yeah. Is everybody with me? If I put centimeters here, don't they cancel out? So I can go from centimeters to inches, like we just said. So how many centimeters? So every inch has 2.54 centimeters. All right. Look, what operation is this telling me to do? The eight, I'm gonna take eight and I'm gonna do what? With 2.5? Divide. divide. It's on the bottom. Anything on the bottom, I divide by. Anything on top, I multiply by. So now I can go from inches to feet. Where am I going to put inches? Where am I going to put feet here? Feet on the top, inches on the bottom. Yes, inches must be on the bottom. So let's see what's happening. Centimeters cancel. So then I'm in inches. Inches cancel. So now I'm in feet. And now I just fill in. So the beautiful thing about this process is you put the unit where it cancels and then you put the unit where you want to go and then you and then you write in the conversion between the two so now i know 12 inches and one foot so how am i going to get this answer i'm going to put in my calculator eight divided by 2.54 divided by 12. if it's on the bottom i divide if it's on the top i multiply right so what do you get when you do eight divided by 2.54, divided by 12. It's going to be gross. 0.262. Two. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to have to tell you in the problems, and I, I think the book does this too. I might be wrong. I'm going to have to tell you how much to round. So maybe I say round to the thousandths place. So 262. I like it. So eight centimeters. Let me see if you guys are cool with this. Eight centimeters is a little more than a quarter of a foot. Or you can just say it's 0.262 feet, right? So let me see if you guys are really with me. Let's do a different problem. So here's an example. This is this example. What's up? Okay. All right. Just want to throw some sound effects in. I understand. All right. What if I ask you this question instead? Um, what do you got, Jeff? I want to know 7.3 feet equals how many centimeters? So what's my path that I'm going to take? I can go from feet to what? To what? Feet to inches to centimeters. Yeah, so I'm basically doing this in reverse now, right? Feet, I can go to inches because inches takes me to centimeters. So that whole process about finding a path from the units you currently have to the units that you want, that by itself is a skill. You have to be able to kind of do that. So feet to inches to centimeters. So now I can write down, you always write down where you currently are. I got 7.3 feet. I really want this to be a, this process is too nice to believe. So where do I put the feet? On top or on the bottom? On top. Do I want feet in my answer? No. no. Do I on want the them to die? I want them to yeah. cancel on the out. bottom. Above. Exactly. I really want you guys, if I put it on top, then it would be feet squared, would it? I want them to kill each other, die. And so look what I'm doing. I'm going from feet to inches. So let me fill in the numbers. One foot is 12 inches. And then I want to now, now I, do I want to be in inches? No, I want to be in centimeters, damn it. So let me go from inches to centimeters. Where am I going to put inches on the top or on the bottom? Bottom. Bottom. 
And then I fill in the numbers. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. Now what operation is this telling me to use? Division, uh, multiplication. Multiplication, there we go. I would divide by one, which I don't even have to do, right? Because divided by one doesn't do shit. So I'm going to do 7.3 times 12, because 12 is on the top, times 2.54, because it's on the top. So this method kind of eliminates the guesswork about do I divide or multiply? And I really want, now, now watch, here's a little, so just throw it in the calculator and get something you, I, don't, I almost don't even care what it is. Let's see, it's going to be about 87, 180, mm, 180, 540, 220. Is it going to be like 220 something? Two, two, two. I got, yeah, that's what I got too. What do you get? 222.54, 504. I got the same. 504? I got pretty close. That's pretty good. Or are you guys like, no, you said 220. You're off. I'm like, oh, damn it. I'll, I'll retire. I'm sorry. All right. All right, now, now watch. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Um, I have no idea what you guys think about it. Has anyone ever seen this before? This process of converging? Converging? <laughs> Only from your alien world. Yeah, this is the first time I've seen this. My alien world? What? Yeah. It's your little, whatever, yeah, you whoever came up with this. Alien world back in chapter one. Yeah. Oh. All right. Interesting. All right. All right. I'm sorry. So, so this is a process that is used in chemistry a lot where you have to convert from moles to grams and all this kind of weird shit. They really like this, but this is so perfect. This is such a beautiful way to do this. And, and let me, let me focus on something. Um, why is it okay to multiply 7.3 times this? Why is that okay? Because 12 inches and one foot, how do they relate to each other? 12 inches and one foot, how do they relate to each other? You could do it. 12 inches and one foot. Is one bigger than the other? No, they're the same. They're the same. So what is 12 inches divided by one foot? It's one. Aren't they the same thing? Yes. So I'm multiplying this times one and times one. So I am not changing the value of it. I am only changing the units used. So I really want you to understand 222.504 centimeters is the exact same distance as 7.3 feet. And of course, we round it a little bit, but you, you know what I'm saying. It's just another way to, to reference it. It's another name for the same thing. It's another, it means the same thing. I don't know. All right, please be with me. All right. Let me see. I got somebody chatting at me. Okay. Okay. I got, I got one person. Okay. All right. Let's see what time is it. Let's see how much more do I talk about now? Uh, let's see, let's do this. Let's actually go to this section, maybe. Let's see what they do for us in this. I'm gonna clear all this away, everybody ready? It's going away, it's gone, okay. Let's see what they talk about here. All right, so we got, of course, some good chemistry stuff. I don't, I don't know what's in there. Um, here we go. So this is the point that I just made. One kilogram is equivalent to 2.2 pounds, roughly. It's rounded, but you know, it's fun. So these are both one. So let me ask you, if I wanted to convert um, 76 kilograms, I wanna convert that to pounds, which one of these would I multiply it by? Which one of those would I use? And how do I tell? Oh shit, what happened? There we go. So that's kind of a weird question. I, I understand. It's easier just to do this. Where would I put kilograms? Uh, bottom. Bottom. So I'm actually going to use this guy. See that? Yeah. They're both one. 
Both of these are one. So if I multiply by either one, I'm not changing anything. Just the only one that makes sense in this case is to do it by this one, which is, okay, that's interesting, Jeff. 2.2 to one. I like it. Has anyone ever gone to a gym? Yes. Yes. Maybe some of you guys. All right. So a, a, a standard weight would be like a, a, a 45 pound weight, I think. Right? At least at the gym I went to. There's a 45 pound weight. And very often on the weight itself, you'll see 45 and below that you'll see the equivalent in kilograms. So if I wanted to see what this is in kilograms, I would do 2.2 pounds down there. So the pounds cancel one kilogram, oh Jeff. And if I divide 45 by 2.2, I get the number. So it's really neat. Uh, and I know right now, hopefully nobody's going to a gym. I don't know if they're, I think there are gyms that are open but maybe they're outside, that's fine. But the next time you're in a gym, take a look at one of the weights, one of the, one of the weights you put on a, um, a bar and just see what it's labeled as. And very often they'll have both kilograms and pounds on them. Um, and you'll see these numbers. Uh, so whatever the hell that is, I don't know, just throw in the old calculator. So here I am, in this case, I multiply by 2.2 because I'm going from kilograms to pounds. And in this case, I'm going the other way. So I have to divide by 2.2. Okay. Let me clear this. I'm going to clear all this away. Oh, okay, okay. So let's do this. Let's talk about metric system. Let's talk about metric system. All right, because that's going to come into play. So let me let me get off my ass here. That might be nice. Let me turn Jupiter off. Let me get up to the board. Uh, how do I turn Jupiter off? There it is. Bye, Jupiter. Bop. All right, now. Oh, shit. What did I just do? Nothing. Oh, okay. I pushed a button. <laughs> okay. um, now, some of you guys know some of the metric system already. Some of you guys, if you're here from a different country, um, there used to be three countries that didn't use the metric system on the face of the earth. That is now one country, the most special country, America, right? We're like, yeah, screw yourself. Um, what's nice about the metric system is it's based on tens. Instead of being based on 12 inches and three feet in a yard and bullshit, real quick, real quick historical lesson. Do you guys know where our system of measurement comes from? Why is a foot 12 inches and why is an inch what it is and all that kind of stuff. Anybody know? I think I do, but I can't remember at the moment. I understand. It comes from the measurements of, I think it was one of the Henry's, one of the Kings of England it was the measurements of the King because the King was given to the people by God. So his measurements were special. Do you understand what I'm saying? Didn't we have a revolutionary war? We threw some tea in the thing and people get angry and stuff. And that was basically, there you go. That's the, that's the beyond drunk history of the, of America. But, and then we said, we'll keep your freaking weird ass uh, foot of the King of England to use as a measurement system. And then, and, and now they use freaking metric system over there. We're uh, sorry, 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 a little rant. I, I apologize. So the metric system is based on 10. And normally, for example, let's do uh, length, right? The largest unit of length that most people know for metric would be kilometer. Everybody knows kilometer. You guys with me? Anybody know what does kilo mean? If you watch crime uh, shows and they talk about they found a kilo of cocaine or something, what does kilo mean? A thousand grams? A thousand. In, in this case, it's... Our meters. We talk about kilograms. Oh we talk about kiloliters. Kiloliters. Kilograms. So this is kilo, and it just means a thousand. So a kilometer. A kilometer. Yeah, I like that. 
A kilometer is a thousand meters. Yes. Now, normally people do not know the next two. But whatever this is, it means 100 meters. And whatever this is, it means 10 meters. Do you see how it's exactly like our number system? This is thousands, this is hundreds, this is tens. So this next one would be one meter. So this is where meter goes. So let's see if we know these three. This one would mean uh, one tenth. This one means one hundredth. And this one means one thousandth. So what's one hundredth of a meter? And let me give you a clue. What's one hundredth of a dollar? A penny. A really, sorry? A penny. A penny. What's another name for a penny? A one cent. Cent. So what's one hundredth of a meter? Centimeter. Centimeter. What's one thousandth of a meter? What's the little bug? There's a centipede, and then there's also a millimeter. Millipede, which means one thousand. So that's millimeter. All right. So those that I've got up there, I've got three blank spots that are the ones that we don't use as much. But even Americans know kilometer, meter, obviously, centimeter, and millimeter. We know those. All right, so let's fill in the gaps. This is kind of neat. What, what, do you see how this is a, a whole number of meters? And this would be the first what place? So if I had a whole number and then the next number would be the first what place? You can do it. This is a whole number and this is in the first. <clears throat> Say again. It's the tenths place. Tenths place. I love it. But what do we call, what kind of number is that? The decimal. Decimal. So that's the first decimal place. This is a decimeter. That makes sense. It's the first, it's the next thing right after the whole number of meters is the decimeter, because that's where the decimal part starts. Can you stop for a minute? Are you guys doing okay out there? All right, now, this one is neat. It's a little bit like this one, but the way I remember this one, it's called deca, and it's, ten, it's big, right? It's a big number, it's like, damn, it's big. All right, so it's 10 meters and 10 meters is, is pretty big. So damn, so it's deca meters. And then the really weird one is this guy. This guy is hecto, hectometers. Anyone ever heard of a hectare? No, okay, it's a little weird. It's like a, a way to measure land area. So it's related to the hectometer. Okay, I'll stop. I want you to realize why you will wish America used frickin' metric system right now. Here we go, you ready? So was it easy to convert from pints to gallons or some shit? Is that like really, really easy? Or even to convert from, I don't know, um, inches to miles, is that easy? Inches to miles is kind of weird. There we go, okay. So, awkward. watch this. This is too nice to believe. If I have, let, let's start off easy. If I have two kilometers, how many meters is that? Knowing that kilo means... A thousand. Yeah. Now, watch this. How many, how far apart are these? Isn't it one, two, three? So if I take the decimal and I move it one, two, three, in that direction, I get the answer. When does that work, Jeff? All the time. Because every step I take, isn't it a step of 10? So metric has to be easy to convert within because it's built on our number system. Our number system is built on, there it is, Jeff. It's built on 10. I need both hands up there. So, how, so, okay, I really want you guys to get this. So how would I do if I had 700 decimeters 
is how many hectometers? I don't know. Now, from decimeter to hectometer, how many times, how, how far apart are they? Four. Huh, sir? So one, two, three, correct? And how, which direction did I go? That way. So one, two, three, point seven, done. I don't need a little uh, grid to help me out with this because it's built on our number system. It's just moving the decimal place around. Okay, maybe, 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 maybe. You're gonna love this. So let's, let's try another one. Um, all right, so what if I had 0 0.0079 hectometers, how many millimeters is that? All right, go ahead and try it. So I have 0 0.0079 hectometers. How many millimeters would that be? So how many times do I have to move the decimal? Five. Five. So one, two, three, four, and then a zero. So 790 done. Next problem, please. I mean, that kicks so much, but, right? Got to be careful. I know where the little dude went. No? Yes? Maybe? No? No? So. Yes. It's really, really easy if I have this to look at. Do you understand, right? All right, so now watch this. Watch this, everybody. Um, let me show you something. So there's a mnemonic device. You guys heard of mnemonic devices? You got to love a word that starts with a letter you don't need. Mnemonic device. Mnemonic device is like every good boy does fine. I think that's right, right? Anybody do music? Every good boy does fine. Is that the way it is? I can't remember. I don't do yeah, that. Is that that's the treble cleft? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there we go. Or how about my very educated mother just served us noodles? It used to be nine pizzas for Pluto. Yeah. All right. That's the mnemonic device. So here we go. You ready? King Henry, which I love that it's based on the King of England. It's fun. King Henry died. Monday, drinking chocolate milk. I've heard of that before. Now you know what it means, right? Yeah, I remember that. All right, sweet. I like it. King Henry died Monday drinking chocolate milk. Now, the one little thing about this real quick. This could be all about grams, right? The awesome thing with metric is that the same prefixes work for length. It works for weight, right? So the one little difference would be Monday could be giggling. <laughs> I've heard giggling, right? Died giggling, drinking chocolate, I don't know. Um, you guys understand what I'm saying right now? So it could be length. If I put M's, that's meters. It could be weight, G for grams. Or it could be, of course, volume, L for liters. What the hell do we do? We have inches and stuff, and then we have freaking uh, um, gallons and, and whatever for, and then we have freaking pounds and, you know, it's like, good Lord, we have, we're all over the damn place. Whereas these guys use the same prefixes for length, weight, and volume. It's crazy. So the L could be uh, laughing, I, I think is what I've heard, but it doesn't matter. So King Henry died something, whatever the MGL, drinking chocolate milk. So if you write that down on your test paper, 
And then I give you a metric problem. So you could just reference that and count just like we just did, right? Pretty simple. So let's do something neat. Let's connect all this shit together. Okay, here we go, everybody. So let me remind you. All right, let me remind you of something. Um, yeah, 2.2 .2, uh, kilograms is one pound. All right, and again, you, you might want to, um, like I'll tell you right now, on the quiz for this, I would give you a printout or I would include on the, of course I got these backwards. I would include on the, um, what am I trying to say? I would include on the quiz a uh, image of the conversion chart, right? I'm not gonna make you memorize all of those. Some of them you should know, of course, but. So I'm gonna tell you 2.2 pounds is one kilogram. So if I had um, 800 uh, decagrams, you can do it, Jeff. Decagrams, how many pounds would that be? So what's your path you're gonna take? I need to get some new markers, that sucks. All my markers are dying. Yeah, I'm out. I'm out. So what path am I gonna take? How are you doing? Yeah. I wanna go from decagrams to pounds. So how am I gonna get there? What do you wish I put here? What goes directly to pounds? Kilo. Kilograms. So I got to go from decagrams to kilograms, and then I can go to pounds. There's my path. So how do I go from 800 decagrams to kilograms? Let's do that first. 800 decagrams to kilograms. What would that be? Divided by. Sorry? Yeah, go back. Divided by two zeros, you know. Yeah, you go Zero back point. once, twice. Yes. So you go back once, twice. So that's eight kilograms. Mm -hmm. Now, how do I change kilograms to pounds? What we go down here? Times one kilogram equal 2.2. .2. Sure. So what goes yeah. here? Kilograms. Kilograms. Kilogram. So then you got uh, one kilogram is 2.2 .2 pounds. Yes. And now you can just do what? Multiply. Multiply. I like it. So the kilograms goes away. So you end up in pounds. So the first step I did is what I call the King Henry step. I don't need this conversion table to do this because it's just stepping. It's just stepping the decimal back. Then I can do the conversion table to do the next step. Okay, maybe. All right. Let me show you. Let me see if you guys can handle this next thing. I, I, all right, now watch this. Does this process give a shit about where we are? And this is why when you guys said, I, I'm kind of surprised that you guys said I did the alien problem with you guys already. I did the alien problem with you guys already. I can't remember doing that. So for example, if I was on an alien planet, right? And their currency is seven gleaves, right? They have seven gleaves. That's uh, 14 Glock star, Glock star, Glock stars, <laughs> right? Sure, what? Let's make this more interesting, sorry. Make this 15, there we go. Seven Gleaves is the same as 15 Glock stars. And three Glock stars is the same as um, 
uh, what do you got? 11 uh, dreams. Okay. It doesn't matter worth crap that I just made this up. It doesn't matter. If I had, um, uh, what do you got, Jeff? If I had 42 gleaves, how many dreams would that be? You can spell, Jeff. So what's my path? I want to go from Glebes to what? Glass stars. Yeah, Glebes to Glass stars. Two, dreams. Dreams. So I got 42 Glebes. Where do I put Glebe? On the bottom, and I want to go to Glock Stars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know why I picked such a long name. So then I got uh, seven Gleaves is fifteen Glock Stars, and then I want to go from Glock Stars. So I want to kill Glock Star. Blah 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 blah, and I want to go to Dreams, and I know that eleven Dreams is three Glock stars. So now how the hell do I put all this shit in my calculator? I would do 42. Times. Times 15. Divided by seven. Divided by seven. Times 11. Times 11. Divided, divided by, by three. So if you put all that in your calculator, if it's on the top, you multiply. If it's on the bottom, you divide. I have no idea if anybody out there is saying this man is talking about freaking Glock stars with this shit. But the point here is the process doesn't care. The process okay. has sorry. Sorry. You wouldn't use parentheses. You don't need to no. Okay. Yeah. I understand why you think, but as long as you do each individual thing, 15 is multiplied, seven is divided, 11 is multiplied, three is divided. I know what you're thinking about, but as long as you do each individual thing, you don't have to put parentheses anywhere. And I don't know what that's going to be. Let's see, six, uh, 90. Uh, oh, this comes out nice, doesn't it? Does it come out to 330? Yeah. Neato. I wish I could say I did it on a purpose, but no. Not bad. So if you had 42 Glebes on this planet, that's 330 dreams, which is not enough to buy passage back to Earth. I'm sorry. You're going to have to. I don't know what you're going to have to do. Whatever the hell you can do on this planet for money. Hopefully it's nothing too free. All right. What time we got? I think that's good. What do you guys think? We've, we've, we've talked about alien currency. I think that might be a good, uh, uh, a good place to stop. Uh, we'll have a nice early day today. So... Um, let me know if you need any answers or you want to hang out for a bit. Otherwise, you are free to go. And I will see you tomorrow Thank or you. today. I got my extra office hours today, too. Thank you, Professor. You're Thanks welcome. so much. See you guys. Peace. All right. I don't see any questions. I'm going to head out. Wait, Professor. Oh, yes. Walker. I had a quick question about um, the book because my book still hasn't came in and I it was supposed to be the seventh. Do you know if there's any online book where I could start doing the catch up on my assignments now that I could just download online? I mean, if there was, then you wouldn't have had to buy a book. Um, yeah. So, so if you had gotten like an ebook, you would have access to it. Oh, an ebook. Okay. Yeah. And I, where could I find that? No, no, no. That's if you would have bought an ebook. Okay. Then, uh, yeah. Well, I'm willing to buy the ebook where it would be on the Grossmont Library um, site. Well, I, I, it might be, to be honest. They normally, they might not. So, I mean, I just got mine. The one that I use to show you guys, I got it from Amazon on okay. my Kindle. Amazon. Yeah. yeah. And that's online, the one that you have, right? 
Yeah, it, it's I, I download it to my Kindle and then I've got it. So it's okay. like an automatic thing. You don't have to wait for it to ship. Now, okay. People okay. are having trouble with pages loading in Kindle. So normally if you download, if you reinstall Kindle, it should help. But there are people okay. having trouble with that. Do you get Kindle on an iOS, like an Apple? Like that? Yes. Okay. Kindle app is in the store um, and it's free. Okay. Okay. I'll keep you updated. Thank you. Okay. Sure. All right. All right, guys. I'll see y'all later.